From the second largest city in the U.S., Los Angeles, California, we've got football as EA Sports coverage of the NFL is on the air. The City of Angels showing it can be loud and raucous. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad emerged from the tunnel. They're ready for football and ready to watch their Rams do battle with the Baltimore Ravens. They'll start out here with a jet sweep, and that would cover beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and that'll make it second and 12. What? 180. 536. Watch the run. Watch the run. Watch the run. A shotgun snap for golf. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. One thing we do know, He's going to get his catches, so as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Mike, An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. Now the third leading rusher in the NFL last year, Todd Gurley. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. Well, so much for picking it up on the ground on third down. Third play of the drive and this defense showing strong early. I wonder how much of that was scouting. I wonder how much of that was a gut feeling like, okay, let's just go ahead and sell out here and get after them thinking they're going to run the football and stuff them early because they've now set the tone. They've set a precedent right here. If you're going to try and run the ball against us, it could be hard going throughout this game. Let's go. Baltimore's offense takes the field again. Charles, they are at 6-2 and two after that win against New England. Two-game lead over suddenly a resurgent Pittsburgh Steelers team, and they get to see them again the final week of the season. But what does that win over New England tell you about Baltimore's chances in the AFC? It tells you a lot. But the main thing it tells you is that this is a team that's not going to shy away from the spotlight. Not going to be intimidated by New England and all of their Super Bowls and you know what they've done this season. But I really enjoyed watching them post game. You know, watching how they handled it. Yes, it was a big win and they didn't downplay that, but they also didn't treat it like it was a Super Bowl either. They know they've got work to do and they figure they'll have to meet New England again in the playoffs. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They go to the former Saint, Mark Ingram. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34 yard line. The tackle there by Marquis Christian. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Throwing on second and eight, Jackson. And this one complete to Seth Roberts. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Nice throw there by Jackson. You think about what a boost he gave Baltimore the middle of last year, led them to victories in six of their last seven games as a starter, replacing Joe Flacco, who had the hip issue. And that strong finish was good enough for the Ravens to capture their first AFC North crown since 2012. And now Jackson's a known commodity. He's the unquestioned starter and with increased expectations and pressure on the former Heisman Trophy winner. Second and 12, Jackson going for the deep ball. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. He's going to find his tight end, Boyle. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. 
JoJo Natson back deep for the Rams. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And on the first drive, three and out. I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So that's finding a way shot. to harness those that's nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Connection made here. Goff to Higby. The completion good for three, and it's second down. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. It, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. Ready. Jackson and the Ravens Ready. come up now first and 10 at the 20. Jackson now. He'll buy some time right. He'll run it. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. Well, everyone in this stadium knows Jackson can do that as well as any QB in the league. Now, they talked about limiting some of his running this year, especially the design runs, but he's still going to scramble when he feels he has green in front of him. He led all quarterbacks last year, 695 yards rushing. And keep in mind, 80% of those came in the seven-game stretch when he was named starter late in the season. On the stop was Aaron Donald. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no game. Jackson's got his tight end, Hurst. The reception good for seven. It's third down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. And a loss of three to bring up four. The evolution of Clay Matthews as a player it's just one that they, they're going to end up writing books about. He didn't even start until his senior year at USC. 
He didn't start in high school. And now he's at all-pro level in the NFL. How about the play he just made there? Yeah, he has certainly made a name for himself. William Clay Matthews III. And this one hits at the one, Clay continues on into the end zone Go. for a touchback. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? And he is brought down Go at the 22 the after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. The last the run good for two. Here's second and eight. I'm going to run you over. I'm going to run you over. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Goff going to hand it to Gurley. And some room to run now. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken Let's down. Go, that one, a gain of 20 and a first down. That's his longest run of the first quarter. And, Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. The first down run with Gurley, good for only about three. It's second down now. Marlon Humphrey with the tackle defensively. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait Did and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. From the 45 on second down, Goff looking sideline incomplete. Robert Woods, the intended receiver that time. Third down here. Uh, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it Shut moves up. quickly on it's him, winning. a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the Is play back at the 44. Fourth down time. now after a loss of two. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it, and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and 10. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Jackson going to get this out to Brown. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. A loss of two there, second down. We're scoreless after one. Raven football here as we begin quarter number two as they've got it second down and 12. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Draw play, Ingram now. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to bring up a third and about seven left. Baltimore was the most run-heavy team in the league last year after Lamar Jackson took over as a starter. And you think about Mark Ingram. He goes from a situation where he was sharing time with Kamara in New Orleans. Now he figures to be the top guy in the Baltimore backfield. Although I guess you could say he's kind of splitting time with his quarterback, Lamar Jackson. But a great veteran presence Mark Ingram is behind Jackson. Ingram now in his ninth NFL season. And he'll be stopped here well short of the first down at the 24-yard line. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Here's Natson. 
A good return there. Call it 13 yards. Let's go. And the Rams Let's will go. go on offense here with a first and 10. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A good pickup, 17 yards, and also a Rams first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So on the heels of the run by Todd Gurley, another first and 10. Out of the gun, gone. Going to flare this one out to Gurley in the flat. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. They'll give him a yard on the play, and it'll make it second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Now gone. Dumps it off to Gurley. It's a gain of seven, and it'll be third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. The Rams on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They can use a conversion. Here it's third and three. They'll run on third down with Brown. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They're able to convert with a gain of four. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the gun, here's gone. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. He'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> this is caught. It's Cooks. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 13-yard line. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. This will be the first red zone opportunity now for the Rams. They have a first and 10 at the 13-yard line. Here's Gurley now, out of the gun. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. They run. It's Gurley. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. He lost two there, and it's third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. 
So they need two yards here on third down. Remember, they're already two of two on third down conversions on this drive. And that one's complete to Gurley. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. Golf. He's got it. It's Higby. Touchdown, Rams. A one-yard touchdown pass as his guys are on the board first here tonight. First and goal, forget running the football, forget establishing anything, just put it in the end zone with the pass for a touchdown. Oh, yeah, I guess that's the definition of catching the defense off guard there. They weren't expecting that. And that totally goes against type, doesn't it? When you think first and goal from the one, you're thinking running play. Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and the Rams take a 7-0 lead. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. The results for them so far, not that great. Well, not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Throwing is Jackson. It's caught by Roberts. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him onto the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and Come spill in. the play. The 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 <laughs> A good pickup. They get eight, but it's third down now. 
Well, Sneed figures to be an important veteran presence for Lamar Jackson. Two years ago, it was a disappointing 2017 for Sneed. That was in New Orleans, but then had a bit of a bounce back campaign a season ago in his first go around with Baltimore. 62 catches, 650 yards. Did have surgery in the offseason on his left index finger, but back to full health and ready to go. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. That's good for nine yards as they convert on the third down play. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 47. Here's Jackson. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new-school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. On third down, Jackson. He finds Roberts complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Jackson now, 9 of 11 passing in this first half. He's got his guys at first and 10. From the gun, Jackson. Robert's got it. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about 7 or 8. Able to get 7 on that first down pass play. Second and 3. Now Jackson toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Marquise Brown, the rookie, his intended target, and it's third and short. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. To Boyle here over the middle. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route, but he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. Pass from Jackson, complete to Ingram. And now lose yardage here, knocked back to the 19-yard line. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. A small bit of adversity here on what's been a strong drive as they come up second and 12. Jackson will throw again. It's complete to Snead. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. The Rams calling on their nickel set here defensively for third down. And Jackson throwing once more. He may try and run for this. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. Jackson always a threat to run. He's got the first down. He was the NFL's leading rusher among QBs a year ago. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Now it's Jackson. And this will be incomplete physical play on the football there and it's second down 
This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. To throw is Jackson. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. The defensive player of the year, Aaron Donald. And that'll make it third and goal. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. The Ram fans in this old stadium on their feet. Third and goal. From the gun, it's Jackson. Roberts has it. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Nifty running there, but it'll come on what should be the final play of half number one. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you cross country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. The Rams going to get the football first here, and they look to build on their lead as the second half gets started. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. Eight yards there on the carry, and now they're left with a much more manageable third and three. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Jackson, options out left. He can run for it, and he will. Yeah, he's going to be stopped short of a first down as he'll get to him at about the 33. The keeper nets him only a yard, and that's going to bring up fourth. Well, anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Now the attention turns back to the Rams' offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead here. What well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches, what are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, Let's take control right away. We've Defense, got yeah. we've, got the de we've, got the, we've got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see if the offense gets done. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Gurley. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Third and long. It's gone. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 11, he goes down. He loses four, and it brings up fourth. 
Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. Here's Thomas. A big boot that time. 57 yards the official distance. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Six yards, the pick up, and that's a first down. Set, ready. Let's go, defense. Let's go, defense. And here we go. Jackson, option right. And now he'll tuck it and run. Well, he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Here we go. Here we go. An excellent Here we run go. of 22 yards on the keeper and also a first down. Pretty nice play here. They go read option, read the defensive end, and when he collapsed down inside, how about the quarterback pulling it, keeping it, and not only getting to the second level, but picking up some really nice yardage. Very, very well read. This is Ingram on first and 10. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Oh, yeah. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. And now Jackson will look to throw it. They set up the screen to Hill. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. From the red zone now, here's Jackson on first down. Rolling to his right. And now he's going to use his legs. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end Let's zone. Go. Go. Good Let's coverage go. downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened, do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you got to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll bring up a second and goal. And again, it's Ingram. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. He may try and run for this. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. 
That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own. But as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you. And if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. Tucker named the league's all-pro kicker for the third time in 2018. Go ahead and admit it. The only time that you get excited about Justin Tucker kicking is when he actually misses. It's and excited rare. is not the right word. Surprise is more what we're talking about. 90.1% coming into 2019. He's incredible. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Goff now to throw. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a Rams first down on a pickup of 10. Woods coming off by far the best year of his career. 86 catches, over 1,200 yards. Now he's hoping to build on that, but well, he was a key cog in the wheel that took them to the Super Bowl last season. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. The intended receiver, Josh Reynolds. But now it's third down. They decided to take a shot and right down the middle of the field. And really, they didn't give it as much time to develop, did they? They want to take that shot somewhere around the 15-yard mark. And the defense able to recover, bat it free. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now gone, and that is incomplete. They went with the dime look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Here's Johnny Hacker now. He's been terrific so far. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And the Ravens taking the field. And with the way this offense has played thus far, to be frank, they got to feel pretty grateful to be in the ball game. I would agree with you totally because they've done all of nothing offensively in this game, yet they still find themselves in a position on this drive where a touchdown can give them the lead. They need to take advantage of it. And they're still looking for that first touchdown here in the third quarter. All they have so far, the field goal. They try and run on first down, but to no avail. Tackled for a two-yard loss in the backfield. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, 
you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. On second and 12, Jackson. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. But has not been the best game for him, but he definitely tried to get by with a little help from his friend there, trying to create a big play. Couldn't do it, fell incomplete, but you're right. Hasn't been a banner game here in the second half, just trying to get going. Big thing is trying to keep confidence up and continue to fire. Jackson, and he's going to find his tight end, Boyle. And they will stop him short. They get him to the ground at the 27, no first down. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. And call that an even 50 yards on the punt with seven on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 27. Time to establish the run game here. Gurley. Patrick on Wasor up to make the tackle. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. What? Like 20. Check 48 to Mike. It's, it's going to be a long. <laughs> Second and five now. Golf. And some room to work. And he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. Charles, I'm looking at you, and understandably, your mouth is wide open in disbelief. What were they thinking? That's going to be one of the great mysteries, but I do know this. When they went out on offense, I will guarantee they told them, don't just make anticipatory throws. Make sure you see it before you throw it. Didn't happen here. Trying to protect that lead, and now they gave it up. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead is now 10 to 7. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 21. In search of redemption from the pick six, Golf. Open man, Higby, the tight end. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. The quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put it up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. And he'll go down and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Back now in Los Angeles. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Jared Goff, four times last year, he led the Rams on a fourth quarter comeback. He obviously didn't do it in Super Bowl 53, but can he do it here? 
Connection made here. Goff to Higby. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. It'll be a first down for the Rams there on a pickup of 18. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Goff on first down. Going up top for Cup. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. It's a gain of 35. That could very well be a defining play in this game. A touchdown, that gives them the lead, and they took a major step towards getting there with that big play right there. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. On first and goal, Gurley. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Rams are going to jump back in front. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Zerline connects on the extra point, and the lead is now 14 to 10. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. That one goes for 36 yards. I know we love our jobs. And pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays... Let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Now it's Jackson. And his throw is incomplete. Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there. But it'll be second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Another carry for the workhorse tonight. Ingram. They'll wind up getting four down to the 36. That'll be a pickup of four as they work with his four-point fourth-quarter lead. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Jackson to throw on third down. And Jackson cannot get away, and he'll go down. The defensive player of the year, Aaron Donald. And it'll be fourth down. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. On is the punter, Cook, who sends it away. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. 
And the Rams now coming out on the field. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are. But with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. Although well, a jet sweep to start the drive. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with the lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that plus three. Yet another carry here tonight for Gurley. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They go play action with Gurley. Now golf. He's going to air it out deep for Woods. And that's caught inside the 35. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. But well, we spent a lot of time exalting the offensive masterminds in this game, right? They draw up these beautiful plays. They look so perfect up on the board. But occasionally, sometimes you just say, throw it up and let him go get it. How about that play? On first down, it's Gurley. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. You have to give big time credit to the cornerback on that play. Most of them like to just sit back and say, I'm playing pass. But he diagnosed that play so fast and got into the backfield for a loss of yardage. That's a monster play by a corner. On second and 11 now. Golf. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Got to give him points for the attempt, but there's just a wave of pressure there. A host of people in the area. Evades a few, but couldn't evade all of them. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. A shotgun snap for Goff. And that is incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. And that is no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Now this was still going to be a one-score game either way, but still, that's a potentially harmful miss here in the fourth. It certainly is, because if you consider that now if they give up a touchdown, they give up the lead. So he might be getting the side eye by the defenders coming out on the field now as he goes back to the bench after that miss. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at their own 40. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The defensive player of the year, Aaron Donald. And it'll be a second and long. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. This pass into the arms of Sneed. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. From midfield now, here's Jackson. And the throw there going to be incomplete. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. 
And this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And the Rams getting set to go now. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at the 20. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll bring up a second and 13. We go to that. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. That's what they needed. It's an eight-yard gain, and now third and four suddenly doesn't look so bad. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The Rams on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This is third and four. Out of the gun. Golf. And that will be incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. On is the punter, Hecker, as he gets this one away. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Here's Jackson to throw. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 and a first. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but... It's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. Two chunk plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Throwing is Jackson. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Clay Matthews brings the heat and gets the sack. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Here's Jackson. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. He's going to let this one go deep. And that'll be incomplete. Now they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty. And it's fourth down. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Rams are going to take possession of the turnover on downs. Good 
Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 42. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Another carry now for Gurley. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll wind up with three yards out of that, and it's second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. Here's Gurley. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Complete to Cooks. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down 14-10, a minute 40 remaining. They'll need to take this football a full 90 yards here as they've got it first and 10. Now Jackson. throw here is incomplete. He was trying to get it to Seth Roberts and that'll bring up second down. So he's unable to complete it there and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Back to throw and he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. The defensive player of the year, Aaron Donald. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And on, right around baby. the 20, Let's he'll go. head out of bounds. The Ravens get a new set of downs, give them 17 on that pickup. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts, finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. Throwing now is Jackson. Now a desperation throw deep to, well, this is taken in, it's complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 33 yards that time. 
We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run, and the football right on the money. This one complete to Ingram. Call it a three-yard gain, and it'll be second down. They're making steady progress, but I see your face. You're worried about that clock. I'm worried about the clock, and at some point, you have to have a splash play in there as well. Jackson trying to hustle his unit up quickly to the line of scrimmage. They'll fake the give to Ingram. Now Jackson. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Corey Littleton. And that one, oh, it's going to hurt big time. You're in the two-minute drill, trying to get your guys down the field, and it's looking like they're going to go up just short, as this is definitely not his best throw. And it'll wind up being intercepted. I don't know about you, partner, but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair, low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art, but maybe in your world, a little bit of a work of art. You I, like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. <laughs> I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zeros. So the LA Rams with a victory here, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Rams are victorious here as we say so long from Exposition Park.